<laughs> G'day guys, welcome to Life on the Mold. In this episode, I'll laminate the whole uh, contour foam and see some real progress as I start to uh, work through this stage. And then I'll turn my attention to the stern area underneath the sugar scoop area and, uh, and laminate in the foam to that area or just uh, below the engine bay. And then we get rough and ready with the uh, yard trolley and flip him over and rip the wheels off and rip the diff out. So plenty more to come in Life on the Mold. So I'm going to really tell the truth here. Um, this particular part of the, of the, the boat build has become a little bit of a challenge because uh, you're working down in a hull and you're perpetually squatting and kneeling and leaning over and you're head first down and, uh, and you know some of the area, particularly up in the bow, has uh, has really pushed me beyond the limit a couple of times because of the, the narrowness of it because it's such a fine bowed. Um, uh, boat it really doesn't have a lot of space so you can only ever work one person unfortunately I am the only person that's been doing the uh, the whole section um, but I'm going to be honest with you it hasn't been the most comfortable uh, time I've, I've gone home at night uh, with uh, calves aching and and uh, hips aching and yeah what I found though is by working in small sections of around 60 centimeters I was able to do a small amount uh, at, at a time rather than laying out a metre or three metres at a time because there simply wasn't anywhere to walk and you were leaning over and uh, and bending. And you can see here by the video, you know, it's, it's all in a bent over position. And for a guy who's got a pretty ordinary back, I think that's actually, uh, you know, it hasn't been the most fun. One thing you'll notice here is that uh, now that it is laminated, it, it's a very, very neat finish. It, um, it has uh, a layer of 300 and another layer of 600 over that contour foam and uh, making sure to saturate the, um, the, the resin into the slots. I know I've probably said it a few times, but uh, putting this uh, triaxial, biaxial, quadraxial sort of cloth down takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of patience and a little bit of skill. The trick is uh, spray your resin on, nice and uh, you know get it nice and wet, and, and then roll it on, and then use a dry brush. That dry brush makes such a difference. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we're down in the belly of the beast here. Um, the important thing is that a dry brush, like, not one with resin all over it, but what you can do with this, you can see I put the cloth on, so the, the surface underneath is pretty wet, but what I'll do is get my dry brush and just run it nice and smooth over the surface. And then re-spray it, spray some more resin on it. Oh, sorry guys. Uh, spray some more resin on it and, th and then just roll it out with your roller and pretty much your air bubble free. Very, very easy to do and, uh, and so important to do. So, I've just nailed a five hour laminating session. Um, I've pretty much finished this hull. Uh, I've got one more layer to go on here and, uh, and she's done, ready for bulkheads. Uh, the other side is ready to go. But uh, one thing I've learned about laminating is that the slower I go, the better. So I initially started off going hell for leather, you know, like a bull at a gate. And, uh, and, uh, and I've learned that the better result is just taking your time. Because you take your time, you don't have any voids to go back in. And, uh, and you know, my lamination is, uh, has come along even in the last two months, you know, leaps and bounds from what I was doing before. Used to go pretty fast thinking I had to work fast with the resin. But this gun system I've got here, this, this big fella here, um, because it mixes right at the tip, there's no cleaning and there's no wastage. So I'm not fighting the resin, I'm not fighting the exotherm. Um, you know, it's getting pretty pongy in here now because that's just starting to go off. So what happens is styrene start to rise, flash off, and uh, I'm gonna have to get out of here or probably gas myself. But yeah, slowing it down, really important. If you're gonna learn anything from me out of these videos is to slow your process down. If you do that, you actually save time in the long run and you save a shitload of material. So um, yeah, pretty damn happy I've got a you know, an absolutely perfect uh, whole substrate here with one more layer to go before I can start putting bulkheads in. So pretty happy Saturday afternoon. Time for a beer. I 
coming here with my trusty scraper. <laughs> Scrape some shit off. Try and clean it up a little bit. Keep it clean. Clean it up a little bit. This is so much frickin' fun. Scraping shit off an old chassis. Holy Jesus, is there not better things to do with your life? But it has to be done. Keep working, can't stand around. Because I love it when it goes wrong. Yeah. Hope it's not going to go wrong. That's fine, eh? So that sicker flex isn't going to hold, is it? So we're going to get the forklift in here and uh, and lift this diff centre out. Proper tail, like all these centres all rated eight and a half. Tons. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, look at that! Beautiful. Just need a brute force, mate. Extreme violence. Yeah. Things like that. What was meant to be a relatively simple operation turns into a good hour of um, prying with crowbars and trying to remove uh, this diff casing. Um, by prying it out, we were able to eventually get it to uh, to release. There was a couple of gears that were obviously engaged. Um, but, yeah, eventually we got it out, and, uh, yeah, frustration was starting to show on us. Turn and the, uh, the, um, you'll see in a moment I was pretty joyed about removing that stinker. That's it. Go to the other side. That's it, she's out. No, keep coming. Hang on, hang on. Keep sliding it, son. Yeah. There you go. Woo. <laughs> well, well done, Gregory. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, right. I come forward now, mate. Up you go. Right out. Legend. All right, get away from it, John, please. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Woo. Like this. Yeah, that's cool, eh? It's awesome. Brilliant. Well, we can leave those on. Don't you? Then yeah. you'll make yourself no, a ball and bolt it Yeah, off. I don't need to put any oil on it anyway, Greg. I just didn't yeah, leave you it. Do, you will, but we're going to have to seal that properly. And then fill it. the oil is what feeds the bearings. Oh, okay, yeah, good point. You can't feed these bearings any other way? Well, you could take them to bits and grease them, but once, they're not designed for that. Yeah, honey. Right, have we got a dip out? Look at that. <laughs> How good's that? Yeah! Thank for that. Yeah! yeah. Settle down, you bitch. <laughs> Thanks, mate. So, operation uh, Yard Trolley. We're at the stage where we're going to flip it over because we're going to change the front wheel, the front bogey. We're going to change it around so it'll steer like a trailer. But uh, we've got the backhoe on here. We're hooking some straps up and uh, we're going to be able to lift him over, flip it over on its, on its uh, chassis and we'll be able to pull all the wheels off and do all the work on it we need to do. So hopefully that goes well. So as I mentioned, by... Flipping the whole chassis over, we were able to do a couple of things. What we did is we uh, totally rotated 180 degrees the entire front axle, which brought the steering mechanism to the front, uh, where I'll be able to weld up a drawbar that will uh, be able to be towed with a pintle hook behind any truck, tractor, backhoe, anything like that. Um, that was the simplest way of doing it. We simply undid the eye bolts and then moved the, the, uh, the axle 180 degrees so essentially that mechanism you can see there is going to be now at the front the second thing too was that the rear brakes had locked on in the time that it uh, had sat there so i had to clean them uh, remove the wheels and then we simply hit the drums with a sledgehammer which released the brake and uh bob's your uncle 
we had three wheeling yard trolley and uh, very, very happy with the result there. Um, by doing that, we now have a, a trolley that can be towed um, and uh, very, very simply uh, used as a, as a mould mover, as a boat launching trolley. And uh, yeah, um, uh, it couldn't have been a better solution for what I was trying to do uh, in the long run. So that was it.
basically one layer away from being finished now. So that's now got 20 mil of, uh, of foam, which I basically had to kerf to, to make it fit in into this slight curve here. And Man, summer, it's just killing me. <laughs> I come in here and I get about five hours work done. That's about all I can handle. 30 degree days, you know, 80%, 90% humidity. You just can't laminate in, in those sorts of conditions and get a good job done. So I'm sort of missing days and doing other projects like the truck and uh, the trailer sailor and concentrating on the, the specking out of the uh, what ultimately will be my catamaran. As you can see, there's plenty going on here. We've got modules, I've got them all covered up to avoid overspray. We found all the bulkheads, you know, all that stuff, all those templates I got when I first bought this thing is really, uh, is really sort of, um, started to come into the fall where I'm starting to find out where things fit. Um, but the tent here is uh, holding up well the summer as well. And, you know, it is a little bit too hot in here some days, so I just haven't bothered. But uh, as you can see here, pretty neat. It's, uh, it's looking pretty good. It's, uh, it's almost as good as a, as a bought one, we say here in Oz. But uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe to them. Please give me a like. And uh, if you don't, well, don't watch it, but if you want to make a comment, please do. I love the comments. I love to try to reply to them all. There's been quite a few, and some classics are coming through. <laughs> I think some people are enjoying the comedy that is life on the mold. So I'll see you next time, and uh, thanks for joining me. Catch you later. See you later.